Hello again YouTube. You know, I had an interesting email from the, a friend of mine the other day, um, a friend stroke colleague, um, that uh, could be quite interesting to a few of you. Um, yeah, I'll just tell you a bit of background how I, uh, how I met this person, Derek his name is. I did uh, a couple of electrical jobs for him uh, a couple of years ago as well as an uh, electrical installation condition report. And during the couple of days I was there, he took quite an interest in the job and electrics, you know, he's all over everything I was doing, asking questions, you know, things like that. And during that time, he's actually um, started dabbling with electronics um, as a hobby. He's got himself a breadboard and, you know, multimeters, you know, things like that. And, um, yeah, so uh, I'll show you the, uh, the email. And... Um, Take it from there. So let's just focus on on it. On it. My camera skills are not that great, but uh, we we'll get round it. Anyway, he goes on. He's um, yes. Hello, Lester. I've been having some electrical problems lately around the home. Let me explain. During the evening, I have noticed that some, if not all, of my lamps are intermittently dimming on occasions for the last couple of days. As you already know, I enjoy dabbling with electrics and have a fascination with the theory side of it. Um, so I thought I would grab the multimeter and take some resistance readings of the said lamps. Yeah, before we go any further, he's, he's not in the electrical game. He actually uh, farms maggots, believe it or not. For um, uh, I think he supplies fishing tackle shops with maggots and things like that. So let's go on. Uh, where was we? This is my problem. That I can't get around my head. I can't get my head around. Read the bulbs. Not making sense. If you could. Uh, would you please take a look at my workings out and explain where I'm going wrong? So it looks like he's grabbed, he's grabbed the bulb. Uh, the bulb I measured is a 40 watt incandescent tungsten filament type. That's off to you, mate, for knowing that. Not many people know that, so he must be doing a bit of research. Um, so he's measuring 100 ohms from the lamp, presumably across uh, the terminals um, from the base. Which when, he, when I apply Ohm's Law, I find, yeah, so he's using Ohm's Law here, um, he's finding 230 divided into 100, which gives you your amps, yeah, 2.3 amps. Which he's then worked out what the wattage would be, which is five, 529 watts. So, let's take it further. What I don't understand is that the bulb is rated at 40 watts, yeah, which it is, and they're usually pretty close. According to this, an Ohm's law, I should get, um, so he's using Ohm law, he should get 0.17 amps, which is correct. And the risk resistance should be um, 1,353 ohms. And he's measuring 100 ohms, question mark. Hey, uh, yeah, I have checked, um, I've also checked my meter against a known resistance, and this is fine, but it would be, mate. Derek, which I will explain later. Sorry, sorry to be a nuisance, but could you let me know where I'm going wrong? I'm pulling, pulling the air out over this. I've Googled it with no useful information. And could you pop round sometime and see if you can fix the fault on getting on the lights? He sent this email uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I have popped round and look, looked at the fault, and it was not a problem with the internal wire or anything like that. Turned out it was a problem with uh, one of the sub mains around his area quite a few people was uh, experiencing the same problem so many thanks Derek Derek you're Derek uh, this video is for you mate you're nearly there and um, you're just missing a few things which I will explain for you mate um, your own law is correct and yes the bulb you are you are measuring 100 ohms which is correct and you've worked it out right down the bottom here but you're getting this uh, from the um, from the hundred ohms. 
So um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to grab some of my old literature that I had for college and uh, see if I can dig some out and I'll explain it to you mate. Alright. Yeah, so I've managed to find some use, useful inf information in my, um, my old books. Um, but before we get into things uh, too heavy, I just want to have a chat about resistance and uh, direct and indirect forces can have upon the measurement. Uh, as a general rule, uh, conductors, um, the resistance of a conductor will increase with the increase of temperature. This is uh, what we call the uh, temperature coefficient. Uh, the temperature coefficient is um, the rise in temperature of one degree of a uh, 1 ohm resistance and then we take that figure and we can use it to calculate what the resistance is going to be at a certain temperature. Um, not, not every, that's, uh, that's a positive um, temperature coefficient but insulators have the opposite. They um, have a negative um, temperature coefficient meaning that if it's warmed up the, uh, the resistance will, will fall. So to answer your question in a nutshell about the um, the 40 watt bulb, why it wasn't making any sense, it's um, it's a direct force from the current running through the conductor that's heating the element up, which is what we want to give us light, that's actually increasing the resistance to the uh, required 40 watts. There is a, a small moment in time when the actual light bulb is switched on. There would be that to answer running through it, but it'd be uh, very, very quick. And that's usually, you'll find that um, most bulbs wouldn't last as long as bulbs that are not switched on and off. So Derek, that answers your question in a nutshell. So uh, what I'd like to do now is just go over some calculations. Um, and I'll use the, the bulb as an example. And I'll show you on paper. Uh, why it's happening. You appreciate this because it does involve numbers. So any, anyone that's um, not comfortable with maths, you might as well switch it off now, but um, anyone that's interested, we'll take a look. It could be quite interesting. And then at the end of it I'll just uh, give you a bit of useful information about light bulbs. Okay. Right, now into the heavy stuff, numbers. So let's have a look. So let's just put this nicely there. This is the actual bulb, or not the actual bulb, but one exactly the same. I want to be looking at. So we'll just uh, have a look at a couple of these variables first before we actually look at the calculation. Well, that var that, these couple of variables here are the ones that we'll be using. This means a resistance at a certain temperature. And this alpha zero, this is the temperature coefficient of the resistance of the material at 0 degrees C. So let's have a look what we got. The resistance of the bowl filament at 20 degrees C is 100 ohms. So I'm basing it on 20 degrees C, so that's more or less how warm most um, homes are now. And that's uh, what he actually measured, around 100 ohms. And the temperature of the filament is increased and the resistance rises to 1352.9. If you remember, um, that's what he was actually getting through his calculation um, from the actual rated 40 watts after applying Ohm's law. And uh, the temperature coefficient of tungsten is 0.0045 per degree C. And um, I've actually, uh, I actually got that number from one of my books, so I, think, I assume it's correct. And what we need to know is uh, what the temperature of the filament risen to. So through these variables we can work out what the temperature of the filament is going to be when it's on and make more sense of the readings that Derek was actually calculating. Um, are you getting it? I hope so. 
Uh, anyway, so um, let's get the actual um, calculation that we've done and uh, take it from there. Right, let's see if I can back up my explanation with numbers. Let's uh, take it up. So there you have it. Um, just wait for it quickly. I'm not going to delve too deep into it. That's why I did it off the camera. Just wanted to make a point on uh, the effect uh, temperature has on resistance. Anyway, so uh, this variable at the top, that's the resistance at a given temperature. And the alpha 20 is the uh, temperature coefficient. So basically what we need to do, we, I needed to rearrange a formula to have the uh, temperature on the left hand side which is uh, what we're after at the moment. So after the rearrangement I've come up, came up with uh, 2804.22 degrees C filament temperature uh, when the light's actually on. Um, it don't seem that unreasonable. Um, I believe it is slightly out, that would be due to the um, actual resistance of the, uh, the prongs, uh, the lead prongs going up to the actual filament. So it's not going to be uh, precise. But the reason for doing this is just uh, just show, just shows on paper that um, you know, it gives you appreciation uh, for the effect that temperature has on resistance on a conductor. So there you have it, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope it's um, answered Derek's question. So we'll leave it at that. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you, bye.